You want to start? <laughs> you can start. Emotional. Emotional moment. So, um, it was a busy morning. <laughs> it was a busy morning. We had, uh, as you've seen, uh, horrible weather throughout the morning. We started with, uh, we have 30% chance of launch, uh, and then uh, we were in con constant contact with uh, uh, the Space Force weather team, and of course the SpaceX uh, weather team. That was basically up to an hour from launch the main concern. Um, Spacecraft has always been healthy. We were monitoring uh, the fairing temperatures because we, as we switched from uh, the uh, uh, launch pad power supply to the battery power supply, we had to monitor the temperatures. So there was a bit of discussion there, but uh, everything normal, nominal. Um, then we switched to, um, to the onboard batteries. Uh, had that, uh, another check at the weather, uh, T-minus one hour, and then we gave the go-ahead for fueling. So fueling started at about T-minus 34 minutes, and uh, around that time we had the green light from uh, uh, the grounds, uh, from ESO, the uh, ERA Mission Operations Center. Everything was nominal, everything was green. So we were just, uh, so as we were fueling, basically we were monitoring, uh, um, we were monitoring weather almost every five minutes. Uh, there was a couple of moments of horror when uh, a, a small storm uh, actually went through the 10 miles radius of the base and was pouring rain as we were uh, fueling, but uh, we, um, uh, we were told that actually it was going to go through very fast, and it did, fortunately. Monitoring winds, and, um, and then there was another storm coming in, but okay, we were told that the arrival time would be after the launch. So basically, into this mess, we had um, the best moment of our life where uh, the, 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 uh, well, the, the sky didn't clear up, but was good enough for us to launch. And that's what uh, you all witnessed. So it was a lot of tension all the morning, up to the last minute, I would say. <laughs> um, the, non the launch was absolutely fantastic. I want to thank uh, SpaceX for the incredible work. Uh, just to let you know, the, the, the space car was rolled out to the pad at midnight, and uh, the OHP team was installing the ground support equipment up to, uh, I think, three in the morning. So it was really a night operation. Um, with some interesting moments, uh, but uh, at the end everything was good. Um, and then launch, beautiful launch. I'm, I'm sure you all have seen incredible images, especially during separation. Didn't expect that was a very emotional moment. Um, the Aero spacecraft uh, reached uh, 12.1 uh, kilometer per second. Escape velocity, I think, as I understood from SpaceX, is the, fa the fastest spacecraft they ever launched on a Falcon 9. Uh, and we are on route to Mars, so that's very emotional. Uh, so we were on route to Mars, and right after uh, 200 seconds after separation, we were waiting for um, acquisition of signal uh, from Goldstone and that worked flawlessly. So you've seen probably uh, that on, on the webcast. Um, and then the auto sequence started. So <clears throat> I think that's what you <laughs> sorry for making the story long. <laughs> but uh, so what I can say is that the, uh, the ground telemetry was received. Uh, the command link is also active, so the Mission Operations Center is now in control, formally in control of the ERA spacecraft. The spacecraft is safe. Uh, we have deployed solar rays uh, nominally, and the batteries are fully, the battery, because we only have one, is fully charged. Um, so now we are going through the nominal timeline, which will take another couple of days. But uh, uh, all the telemetry is nominal, so we are absolutely thrilled uh, to have
have a beautiful spacecraft en route to Mars in very healthy state. So it couldn't be a better day, really. And, uh, <laughs> so we nailed the schedule, we nailed the budget, and now we nailed uh, the, the launch and acquisition and, uh, and the auto sequence. So we are now um, uh, controlling the spacecraft on attitude control thrusters. The next step is to go on reaction wheels. And once that is uh, uh, done, we will go earth pointing and uh, and then continue the journey. So head, I mean, thumbs up to industry, thumbs up to SpaceX, uh, OHP, uh, Space Bell, GMV, OHP Italy, uh, Redwire, uh, Avio. Uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of what we have done in the last four years, really. So let's uh, cheer this moment uh, because, okay, I'm sure things will happen in the next two years. But, uh, yeah, I think we, we should all be proud of what we achieved today. It's, uh, it's a great moment for ESA. It's a great moment uh, for uh, European industry and Europe in general. So I'm really, really, really happy. With this, I uh, would like uh, Haley to share some of her feelings because I think <laughs> we went through a lot. And maybe Michael, uh, Michael was in the uh, Banana Creek with the public. So I think it would be also be nice to share what was the emotion there and also the outcome of the science, maybe in the science meeting you had yesterday morning. Yeah, as uh, Ian already said, it was really emotional journey. So I started on last night, so we were, I was uh, still with the uh, industrial team till 12.30, uh, 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 so I had a very short night. Uh, then uh, this morning, going, go, and yesterday evening when we left, it was raining, it was horrible weather, and we were like, Let's see. We still have a chance. <laughs> it was a 15% chance <coughs> last night. So we we're okay. We go because we still have a chance. And this morning it just got better and better. And we we're like, yes, we really are launching today. And uh, just seeing Hera uh, separating, uh, it's like amazing, really amazing. So, so. Yeah. What to add? I mean, yeah, as mentioned by Jan, I was at Banana Creek. We also arrived there with terrible weather and we were of course also listening to the information came in with the launch likelihood continuously increasing. I have to say for the first half an hour, one hour this increase wasn't really combined with any change in the weather. But then then you could really note that it became better and the whole I mean more because of the weather most of us were in the museum while waiting. Um, and then, but you could then really note also that the, the, that it changed and uh, the whole uh, mood became more cheerful and the launch itself was, was incredible. It was incredible to actually see the rocket even from far away and, 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 and everyone happy and cheering. It was, it was a great moment. And yes, now, now, now we are really in flight and now Hera is, is on its way to, to Didymos. I can maybe add about the timeline. So what the timeline that Jan describes are, are about three days if everything goes well. And then late on Thursday or on Friday, we are expecting the first images from Earth and Moon taken from, uh, from Hera. And we hope to also get them out by Saturday or so. Okay, <coughs> thanks, Mika. So yeah, first images as Mika said, we will also use, I think, now the uh, Earth Moon images to calibrate the theory instrument. Indeed, our thermal imager. So that's kind of a reference point. Yes. And also, and the work is to Mikhail and his team. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> 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 All right. So we have, I think uh, yeah, we have a few interviews scheduled, but sure. if there's any question right now. You can ask it, but otherwise we would uh, would go and do the interviews. I think. I guess you just have a to question on me. Yeah, yeah. Michael, can you go over a little bit um, what was mentioned during the science briefing yesterday? So the science briefing was essentially an update of the of the progress of the working groups, and maybe. Uh, yeah, one one of the most interesting items is we are still trying to improve the knowledge for Didymos when it arrives, uh, for Hera when it arrives at Didymos. Um, what happened is, so we hope that we can get beforehand the final 
uh, orbital period after the dark impact. We know that it was uh, reduced by 33 minutes, but there is some indication that it was still changing at the operation, at, at the observations around the, the impact. And with this also, this is more operational. We are trying to predict the orbital phase when, when HERA arrives. And the corresponding observations, mainly due to weather and also technical issues at some telescope from 24 were not conclusive, so we are now trying to get additional observations from Januar to March 25, which is the last chance before the, 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 the cycle when, when HERA arrives. Otherwise, I have to say in terms of the preparations, overall we are, we are prepared for the mission. I just up the signal in uh, California. Mm -hmm. Receiving Goldstone. See Goldstone. Yep. One hour, one hour and a quarter. It was one hour sixteen. Uh, I might be swapping with the separation. Separation was about one hour, one hour 16. sixteen, and then two hundred seconds later it was. I I don't know exactly because well, I was on my hour. emotions <laughs> <laughs> and, and looking at the plot, so I didn't look at the watch at that time. But I think it was. Fairly soon after the 200 seconds we were expecting. Uh, in Actually, what? Yeah, do you uh, know the exact I have time? 12, I have nine minutes over 12 for this. Maybe it was a minute before. Okay, okay. so. Uh, mm -hmm. 117 after launch. Hmm? 117 after launch, no? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That could be a yeah, yeah. minute. Yeah, that makes sense. One second. Yeah, because it, because I got the message at uh, nine yeah. minutes over twelve, so probably it's one or two. But it was mm -hmm. okay. it was right there when we yeah. saw the yeah. when we were looking at the signal. We waited what thirty seconds, and then it was there. Uh, signal is nominal. It's all good. So it locked well on the right frequency. So also, yeah, should ask. I uh, should thank uh, NASA, DSN, for the support. Uh, that was uh, very much appreciated. It's nice because I don't know if you're aware, but the uh, the first acquisition of the Dart Spacer was done from the ESA uh, network, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then thank you very much. Uh, if there are no other questions, then uh, thank you for uh, following us and this adventure. I'm absolutely certain that we'll live through many emotions in March with the Mars flyby and then in two years when we reach Didymos. We have a fantastic yeah. science team. They love talking to the you've seen it yesterday. They love having interviews and sharing their passion with the public. So feel free to reach out to our science team. They're absolutely fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.